Right now, I am in Sedona, and it's very, very hard to get an internet signal in the area of Sedona that I'm at. Very difficult. So, I'm just going to state um, some stuff, these clip notes, and I'd really, really like to thank Uri for forwarding me through email the video. This, uh, uh, this is what I want to say first. My, my thoughts are not so organized right now, so I, I need these paper notes. YDT, sorry, y YTD, uh, video, YDT, y YTD video downloader. That's the YouTube downloader. I strongly suggest people get this. And you're going to understand very much why I say this after this presentation is complete. And you should be okay as long as you follow within the guidelines of the fair use. However, YouTube often disregards fair use, but when they do, you can fight it. So, please, get the YTD video downloader. We have to stick up for each other on the YouTube community because there is massive pressure to shut people up. I mean, they demonetize people for having activism political channels. Think about that. So first, yes, I know that I said the official documentary will be something like two hours and a half long. I had told a lot of you this. Um, I'm not sure where I said this. I don't remember if I said this in any preview or if I said this simply in the Facebook groups, but I did tell several of you that it will run like two hours and a half long. Uh, however, it looks like the official documentary will be something around three hours and 20 minutes long. We could not cut out more without losing uh, context. I will do my best to make sure that all upcoming documentaries uh, after this will be at least under two hours. I will try. I will try. A anyway, I hope that you like... I really hope that you appreciate the extended footage trilogy, which was not as organized as I warned it wouldn't be. And I, I hope that it gave you a lot of context to learn from. It, it, is, it, it, it is saved for educational purposes. But as far as a clear documentary is concerned, very, we, we are almost ready to release that to you, the, the official documentary, which will be somewhat around 3 hours and 20 minutes, unfortunately. I'm going to do my best afterwards to make it under 2 hours long. And... I will not be talked into ever again letting my rants be kept in a documentary. I'm going to have the strict, a stricter um, scripts. All right. Now to the point. I have the uh, name of this clip somewhere. Um, actually. I think I could pull it up, the name of the clip. It's, it's not on these papers, so I'll just look through the... I got it somewhere here. Okay, here. I I definitely have it. I definitely have it. Alright, hold on. Yeah, so, the next thing. Okay, now the second uh, point of reference that I'm going to give now is that... There is this video on a YouTube channel. The YouTube channel also links to website. This website is www.israelversusjudaism.org. I am not entirely sure uh, which organization is behind this website. And this website has a YouTube channel called Israel vs. Judaism. The name of the YouTube channel is... Again, the name of the YouTube channel is, is called Israel vs. Judaism. 
and it links you to a website www.israelversusjudaism.org and there is also a Facebook page to this. This is actually a very insightful um, website. The Facebook page, it, it's obviously connected to it, as is the YouTube, because it, there's no drifting, so it's um, less people know about this. I mean, more people are familiar with uh, www.nkusa.org and www.truetorahjews.org. More people are aware of these, um, but very few people that I've met are aware of www.israelversusjudaism.org. Now, what this um, website talks about is the way um, ultra-Orthodox Jewry is actually treated in the state of Israel. And how the state of Israel violates uh, the, the laws, uh, the international laws set down by the United Nations concerning the religious population within the state of Israel. They are supposed to be exempt from military service because... Again, I, uh, look, the ultra-Orthodox position is the original Jewish position. Now, you could technically be modern Orthodox or conservadox or semi-Orthodox or whatever. I, I don't necessarily fall into the ultra-Orthodox, although I was largely influenced by the ultra-Orthodox. But if you are all, if you're genuinely Orthodox in any way, the last group you want to attack is the ultra-Orthodox because that's like, that's like going after your parents. It's ridiculously wrong. If we are to honor our mother and father, collectively as Jewish people, we should have no, no animosity against the ultra-Orthodox. That, uh, that is where Torah leadership will always have to come from, for that matter. Now, they are not always able to protect themselves, so as a Bundist, I'm just going to say that we Bundists will protect them. Now, we... We Bundists do not claim to represent all Jewry, okay? We don't play Zionist games. You know, Zionists pull that card, we don't pull that card. We do, however, maintain that we understand Jewish interests the best as far as protection is concerned. But we don't claim to rep we don't claim to rep be the leaders of this generation as we understand that Jewish people would typically not be uh involved in a lot of uh world affairs. Now we could make Halakhic arguments against that, but that's not the point. We are so against assimilation that we don't want anything to happen to the ultra orthodox. And from a uh, from a, a Jewish perspective, as the Jewish nation is not ethnically based, and it's definitely not a nationalism. The Jewish the Jewish nation has nothing to do with that. The Jewish nation is based on a cultural religion. It's not the only nation based on a cultural religion, but it's the one that sticks out like a sore thumb, and that's because of this false narrative largely created by Protestants about a fictional Jewish race that doesn't exist. Because the Jewish nation is not racially based, it's not ethnically based, it's not tied to blood. It's culture and religion. Well, the highest national treasure we have are the very ultra-Orthodox that everybody just wants to shun for some reason. And I don't mean by everybody, I mean Zionist world, uh, tied in with Christian Zionists and Jewish Zionists, and of course Americanists, who say that they'll protect religion, except they won't, unless they can use religion as a propaganda tool. If it's sincere religion, well then they back off. It's interesting how the more strict the religion, the more... the, the stricter the religion, I've noticed, the least likely of hypocrisy. The more lenient the religion, the more it's used as a propaganda tool of the state. So, yeah. It just goes to show spirituality is one of the largest dangers of society, and it's never really been religion. Anyway, Israel vs. Judaism, uh, their, their YouTube channel, they came out with a video that I did see. Um, I saw it on, on a phone, um, on, a, on a friend's phone, because my phone was dead. And so I looked on YouTube, and I, I like to check in on this channel every so often. I loved this I uh, um I actually had my friend press like on it because my phone was dead, and uh, this was like a, a week ago or so, um maybe two weeks ago. I don't exactly remember when. Oh wait wait, actually it was published. Okay, so it I I just remembered this. It was published on March twelfth. I actually remember this now. <laughs> okay, so it was published on March twelfth, two thousand eighteen this year. I just now recalled. Um. 
I loved this one. It's interesting, though. I, I wonder if a bunch of Zionists are the ones that uh, attacked this channel. Let me show you now a picture of what the result of this attack is. All right, you see this picture? It says, the following content has been identified by the YouTube community as inappropriate or offensive to some audiences. Now, what's funny? This is so symbolic to what this, this uh, speaker is about to say in the protest. It, like, intertwines perfectly. Just a heads up to the Zionists who like to bully people on YouTube. And to the Americanists who are afraid of what's going to happen when people figure out what world Jewish thought really is. And how much it's going to threaten American empire. Just, just a shout out to all of you. Don't ever try that on our channel. Don't you dare try that on our channel. Your empire will crumble. The United States of America and the State of Israel will crumble for all of its war crimes. Now, watch this video, and I'm particularly going to fall back on our best allies, the Muslims. Please, like the video that I'm prescribing to you right now, and help support um, the Israel vs. Judaism channel on YouTube. Please. Please. Because it is true. Jewish people are victims, too, of the State of Israel. Not just the neighbors of Israel, and not just the Palestinians. Please, in solidarity and friendship, I'm asking you to please support this video and support the Israel vs. Judaism YouTube channel, please. And just as the just as the um, the picture shows, the name of the uh, video is "Anti-Zionist Jews Protest Israel and Visit Anti-Zionist Jews Protesting Israel." and visit of Netanyahu to the UN. And it's so funny how they understand UN charter and UN rules better than Netanyahu does. <laughs> Jewish neighbors 
under the pretense of bringing greater security for Jews. The truth, however, is that they oppose authentic religious Jews who refuse to follow their ideology just as much as they oppose others. The shameful Israeli government wants all Jews to be Zionists. To achieve that goal, they're oppressing the anti-Zionist communities, expecting them to break down, give up, and join their movement. Nowhere is the ideological divide between Judaism and Zionism more sharply apparent than in the current struggle over forced conscription into the IDF. The Jewish community has always been staunchly opposed to joining the Israeli army. Following the fundamental principle of Jewish belief that Jews are in exile and are forbidden to have their own state or army or to wage wars against any nation. This is in addition to their objection to the ongoing immoral behavior of the Israeli army. Large communities of hundreds of thousands of Jews are now struggling to avoid service in the IDF. Only wish is to live at peace with their neighbors, serve the Almighty and continue with their daily lives. Israeli government, shame on you! Israeli government, shame on you! Israeli government, shame on you! Sometimes they come with attractive promises and sometimes they come with violence. But the goal is the same to force our communities out to violate their religious principles. Whoever resists them is arrested, and those who dare speak out are arrested with particular brutality. They do not spare the young and the elderly, the women or the children, breaking into houses in the middle of the night to arrest activists is a common police practice. Anti-Zionist Jews or conscientious objectors deserve the right to be exempt for service in the Israeli army, as described in UN Commission on Human Rights Resolution 1998-77. By forcing our communities to serve in the IDF, the Israeli government is trampling on our religious rights. Anti-Zionist Jews worldwide support our heroes in the Holy Land in their struggle to preserve their religion and basic human rights. These operations are yet another proof that the shameful state of Israel and Bibi Netanyahu and the terrible actions do not represent the Jewish people. Do not represent the Jewish people. The state of Israel is not a Jewish state. It's a Zionist state. Yeah. Therefore, we cry out, IDF, stop yeah. the draft.
going to make make a note here. So, uh, aside from sharing this video, which I hope you all do, because the way that that film, uh, that the way that that uh, video from the YouTube channel of Israel versus Judaism, the the way that that got censored, the what the style of it is, uh, well, mind blowing. Not really surprising, but it's just, it's still shocking despite its surprise. It's like a surprise without a shock. But today, I learned, as my wife has better access to the phone than I do, I learned that Dr. Wise file was recently arrested. He was released, of course, because there was no grounds to really arrest him. He was uh, arrested for, like, provoking something. He, Whatever. Zionists do this. I mean, he's been really making the Zionists look foolish, and he will continue to. And he will be unstoppable, God willing. But I thought that I should give that update, although he was released. I only learned about this today. Okay, so I think that it's also good that I uh, should show you these pictures that you are seeing here. Um, these are pictures I took today of Stadona. You know, and when I look over around this land, there's a sort of melancholy, I feel, as the Native Americans don't have their tribal rights, they don't have their cultural rights, the fact that they're indigenous, so therefore they should have first dibs over this land. It kind of mirrors how Palestine has to go through Israel for any concessions at all. Just like the state of Israel needs to be dropped, the United States of America needs to be dropped. And it was very interesting seeing all this, I went on the, uh, the, uh, the, the tour, you know, the pink, Jeep, the, the pink Jeep tour, which is out here in Sedona, it was really, really cool, and, you know what, I, uh, I met this, uh, tour guide person, who was doing the tour guide for us, and uh, he was pretty cool. And uh, he uh, had mentioned the slaughter of the Native Americans and how they were very peaceful, and how much of what you hear about, you know, arrows being flying at, flown right at you, that it's pretty much lies. That is not true. And that that was largely centuries of that's just centuries of American propaganda against the indigenous population. It mirrors very much the Israeli lie towards the Palestinians. So, it just leads you to see no more State of Israel, no more United States of America. This is part of the answer to problems at large. I find personally that the State of Israel intertwines with the United States of America, and the plight of Mexico also intertwines with Palestine, and the plight of the Native Americans also intertwines with Palestine. By the way, remember, Mexicans are Native American. They're not immigrants. They are the Aztec people. In fact, the Aztec word for um, Mexican is... The Aztec word for Aztec is Mexica, which is where the word Mexican comes from. I've said this before, but it's still worth mentioning. As every time a Mexican is referred to as Latino or Hispanic, this is cultural genocide. And every time a Mexican refers to themselves as Latino or Hispanic, it's proof that they've been colonized. And that's part of the notion of cultural genocide. It's, it's not even a notion, it is what it is, it's cultural genocide in that context. But genocide is genocide no matter what you do, and when you rewrite history, this is also genocide. And I don't believe that the victors always write history. I don't believe that that's true. I think imperial power can only last for so long. All the robots and cloning, it cannot save these capitalists. We the people, we have to stand as one voice against this and we have to give collective rights back to the indigenous peoples that are robbed. Whether we're talking about Palestine, whether we're talking about the lands and peoples that were here before the United States of America and Canada, whether we're talking about the aboriginal indigenous peoples that were there before Australia and New Zealand were, were established. There needs to be more than just restitu restitution, but there needs to be restoration. You know, Navajo Nation, their lands, they don't have water rights. 
And at any time, the United States could just take away any concessions made. It's That's not justice, and that isn't a proper peace treaty. And by the way, the United States of America has not kept one single treaty with the natives of the land. Sounds a lot like Israel not keeping one single treaty with Palestine, doesn't it? By the way, Sedona is beautiful, and every time I see it, I can't help think this doesn't belong to us.